Hello, everyone. Salim Omar here from the e-commerce Money Map podcast. I've got a special guest. I'm super excited to have Ryan McKenzie on the on this episode on this show for us today. Ryan's a seven-figure e-commerce business owner, but I am not going to be the one introducing him or saying more about his bio. I'm going to have Ryan share with us uh, what does he do and what's led him to where he is now. Hey, hey, Salim. Hey, hey, everybody. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Um, it's uh, it's always exciting to to be able to talk to to other e-commerce um, business people who are who are trying to continue to grow. Um, anyways, my name is Ryan McKenzie. I'm one of the co-founders of True Earth. Um, True Earth. If you can see, this is like our package. Um, we are we we create uh, we have a patented laundry detergent strip. Uh, that has um, experienced like extreme hyper growth uh, from from two, early 2019, April 2019, until uh, now we've we've gone from from nothing to you know four or five million a month in revenue and over 135,000 active subscribers. Um, but more importantly, you know um, what's really awesome about growing this business. And one of the awesome things that I've got to participate in is, is it's not just about trying to, to profit and, and make myself money. This business started from wanting to do something to create a better life for my kids in the future, not financially, but a better place for them to live in, uh, in the future, as well as their kids in future generations. So it's, but for me, I'm passionate about it because it's not just scaling a business, it's also scaling impact. Yeah, it's always more powerful when it goes beyond financial, doesn't it? Oh, 100%. Yeah. How did you How did you start this business? I mean, did you wake up one day and say, you know what, there's a need for this product in the, in the, in the, in the marketplace and I'm going to create it? Is that kind of how you stumbled uh, in it? You know, ever since I was three, I've always wanted to be uh, like Mr. Clean. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, um, no, it's funny. So um, we were we were really into um, the outdoor adventure space and uh, getting people outside, disconnecting from their phones and adventuring. And we had a lot of experience in subscription products. And my partner, Brad, uh, our business partner, Brad, he was at uh, a dinner party um, with his wife's. She had like a, a stepbrother growing up. And he was talking to Brad about how he had invested in this patent, and he thinks that it would have been would be a great fit for something like the Dollar Shave Club. And this is probably like circa 2017. And they presented it to us, and I was just like, I don't know, like you know, the laundry detergent market is extremely saturated. They're like just big, big, big ultra mega corporations that are that are running the show. I don't think that I don't know if we'd be able to compete. And uh, so he kept on, they, they kept on having these dialogues and nothing ever really transpired. And then I was watching, uh, my, my wife was pregnant with my third kid and I was watching YouTube in the morning with my, my, uh, my kids. They're now like uh, almost seven and five. And we were watching, we were watching YouTube and there, there was a, one of those unboxing shows and I was watching it. And like, I was going through this time in my life where I was really concerned about the future for my kids. Like I never had experienced that previously in my life. Like it was like, I came to this maturing moment where I was just like hyper aware of, um, potential consequences of the things that we're doing in the future. So anyways, we're watching this show and they're unboxing this treasure chest, uh, plastic and inside of it are surprise toys, which are like little, like, like little drugs for kids, the dopamine bombs. And they opened it up and it was wrapped in plastic. The treasure chest itself was made of plastic and there was like a dozen plastic toys on top wrapped in plastic in a plastic shell plastic toy. Anyways, by the time we had unwrapped everything, there was like this heaping pile of plastic on the table. And I was sitting there thinking like, it was just triggering my, uh, my dad anxiety. And I'm like, what are the consumerism? Like we've, we've, re- we've resorted to like turning kids into addicts, like addicts for, for, for toys, addicts for apps. Like, I, I, I mean, that's like a whole nother tangent, but I was just like, okay, I, I am tired of like, thinking about all these things that are potentially causing a future problems for my kids. I need to do something about it or like, you know, I, I can't just, I'm not saying I'm a, it was virtue signaling, but like, I just like, it's one thing to just talk about it. And like, it's another thing to put your money where your mouth is. So when I originally, I hadn't actually tried these strips yet. And so, uh, 
I looked up their, their, their research on how much plastic goes into landfills based on, on different products. And laundry jugs in North America, there's about a billion jugs purchased every year, and about 700 million of them wind up, wind up in landfills. And it's not that people don't recycle, it's that, that about 10% of them can actually be recycled or there's demand for it, and then 20% you burn for energy and the rest basically you know, are not recyclable. So um, I looked into it and then I'm like, okay, I wonder if that product that we've been being pitched has any legs. So we they sent it to us. And like, I mean, this is how big it is. It's like less than two grams, which if you compare it to liquid laundry detergent is 35 to 40 grams and same with powder and pods are 25. I didn't think it was going to do it. I didn't think it was going to work. So we brought it in, we tested it. I had my wife test it to double check. And we were all like super blown away on how effective it was. And so we, we, we got our other business partner, Kevin, to get us a website going. And we said, hey, if we sell 150 uh, of these packages in the first month, then we probably have something. And we sold more than 1,500. So yeah, we, we carried on. <laughs> yeah, proof of concept was, came on very early on in your, in your journey. Mm -hmm. You got excited about it and how you know, the impact it would, it would make. Yeah, that's cool. Um, what is running an eco-friendly company, e-commerce company, different than a regular company? Oh, on so, on so many levels, because you know when you're when you're competing or when you when you're running a regular business, like especially when you're learning, you're like, okay, well, how do I how do I do I get like three PLs to ship my product? If I get three PLs, okay, whatever, I'm just going to give them the stuff and they're going to ship it. When you have an eco-friendly product, uh, you now also need to be cognizant of the behavior of your 3PL. Like, are they wrapping things in plastic? Are they using bubble wrap? Like, um, you know, we're actually not using 3PL, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, I mean, Amazon oftentimes ships with plastic. So, I mean, those are things to be cognizant of. Um, but like, if you're, if you're running a business <clears throat> where your villain is plastic, you need to be very careful about um, how you do business, who you do business with, who you partner with, um, you know, like it, 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 there's definitely layers of intricacies that you're just kind of being held to a higher standard when you, when you are, when your mission is tied to a problem. So if you're, if you're, you just need to be very careful that you aren't implicating yourself in the problem that you're pointing the finger at. Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I got you. Just it, there's there's more to it than it, it'd probably be challenging if it was your first rodeo, just because you're learning the ropes and you're also trying to figure out how to navigate um, all the all the the different pieces of of being an environmentally friendly company. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've had rapid growth. You said you know you started the business a couple of years back, right, from mm -hmm. zero, and you're at multi million dollars you know several million a, a month did you, did you say yeah yeah i think i mean we're we're in the mid eight figure range now yeah Prayer. yeah yeah that's that's pretty 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 cool uh what was the challenge or what was exciting about about all that you know in in a year a couple of years kind of going from you know with such a huge increase what are some of your experiences as you started seeing these orders flying in? You know, like, I would actually say that it's probably been less exciting than having a business that has steady, like, this sounds counterintuitive, but like a steady growth business where like you're actually able to uh, enjoy the process without constantly breaking all of your systems because when you grow at this pace like it's like holding on to the end of a runaway train by the like the skin of your the skin like by your fingernails you know and um what winds up happening is uh you, you know you'll hit a milestone um and covid didn't help but you can't really celebrate with people very well in in these times but you'll hit a milestone and it's like okay that's great that's awesome well, what other fire is currently uh, happening inside of our business right now. And um, you, what winds up happening is most of the time in the moment, I probably don't really get an opportunity to enjoy it, which which really sucks. I mean, frankly, but what will happen is like, I'll be like going to bed on like a Tuesday and it's like 1130 at night. And I'll just sit and think about it for a second and be like, holy moly, like, like, 
where are like how did we get to like we're like this we were the second fastest growing startup in Canada uh, last year um and we've grown from nine employees then to 230 in that's in an additional year like so like you know things were wild then things are like even wilder now and and the bigger you get the bigger the stakes the higher the risk the 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 every mistake has much bigger implications so it's uh, like i was saying it's um, once in a while i'll be lying in bed at night and just be like i can't believe where we, uh, where we are but i mean at the end of the day i'm still the exact same person i was before starting this if anything i would actually say that getting so involved in um like an eco-friendly product has really it's actually made me grow as a person like I, I i second guess a lot of the things that i normally would have just done before um like even like somebody cuts me off in traffic like in the past i would have been like ah you know and now i'm just like okay well i don't know what what happened just you know maybe they have to get to the hospital i don't know you know and it's it's i know that doesn't make a lot of sense that this is made me change other perspectives in my life. But I think the exercise of having to make sure that I'm behaving in a way that's in line with uh, our mission has yeah. made me second guess or really consider how I behave in other scenarios in my life, which I think has been this pretty cool uh, transition for me. Yeah, that's that's amazing. I mean, it's changed the way you are approaching yourself, your you know your life because of kind of the, the space you're in. <laughs> T- totally. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I, you know, there's periods in my life where I, I w- was definitely selfish. Um, I mean, I think everybody goes through it. And I think like, I'm not saying that I'm like, uh, you know, everybody has their things that there's, they probably still uh, are, could put, put themselves as number one, but it's, it's just, I, I'm pretty grateful that I've been able to grow as a person um, and you know, kind of like our business, like w- one of our mottos is uh, little hinges, swing big doors, like little small changes when combined with millions of people together, add up to big impact. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's just about like, what can I do every day to get, uh, you know, be a better person? Like, what can I do to be better? And I'm, I'm not talking about the, the you 1% better every day. And in a year, you're going to be like compound interest, blah, 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 blah. I think that's baloney too. But like, just like, you know, I think it's it, as as a human being, um, if your business can do more than just make you money and can change who you are for the better, then that's a win. Yeah. So, who's on the leadership team, Ryan, besides yourself, just to get an understanding of kind of the organization of the of the company? Yeah. So, uh, Brad Lesky, he's our CEO. Um, Liz Carr, she's our COO. She used to be with, she's been with like Gillette and uh, Keurig and Dr. Pepper. Um, and then we've got um, we've got a couple other um, uh, directors from Johnson & Johnson. And it, we've, we've been really lucky to attract um, really great talent because, you know, there's only so much... <laughs> You, you, you only know you, you can't you can't know what you don't know right and um, what's interesting about this business is like since we're both D2c and in retail now um, there's not a lot of people with experience who've like like the road is not well paved to to this uh, to the spot like there's you know there's like Harry's and um, God I can't even think of any other like there's other brands um, like snow that have, that have kind of like penetrated retail as well as being able to stay successful in D2C. And, but they're, they're, they're few and far between. So um, the, the way that we've been able to, like we, we have a D2C background. So like we were just kind of like, we were taking wild guesses with retail because it wasn't, wasn't our, our bread and butter. So we had to bring in people that know that. But then it's, it's, it's different because you also, since most retail people aren't, D to C first people, there's like, there's this big, like hive mind learning thing that's happening. And we have to have like somebody whose job is specifically to make sure that there's no channel conflicts. So it's, it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's wild. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. What have been one or two surprises, pleasant surprises or unpleasant surprises uh, as you started your company and and taken it to where it, it is today? 
Oh, oh man. Uh, there's, there's so many, so many, so many little things. Um, you know, um, God trying to, trying to pick something specifically. Um, you know, you hear we're, we're, we're still bootstrapped. Um, uh, so we haven't taken any money from anybody at this point. Um, so no angel investors or, or venture capitalists or private equity or anything like that. But, um, it's uh, you hear about like these Silicon Valley startups that are just like hammered by all these guys. And uh, from an experience standpoint, like I've had a lot of different uh, firms like reach out who are interested. And I mean, this is like totally probably like an ego thing, but uh, that was like, like you hear stories of it, but you never really see like, how does that actually transpire? What does that look like? And uh, from, uh, you know, being the 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 most popular kid in it felt it, it felt like the equivalent of being like the most popular kid at school, having everybody wanting to come knock on your door. And like, I guess my point is that like when you know you have something, uh, or, or when when that, that starts happening, you know mm. that you're you're on to something really great because people from everywhere are trying to to uh, to dig in and and um and and be part of it, right? And the other, the other big thing that has been fantastic is um, I really wanted to build um, like a movement, people that are um, getting behind a cause and our cause is like to eliminate plastic jugs. So we have like, we're up to just under 4 million plastic jugs eliminated from landfills. So we started this thing called the True Earth Movement. And I honestly, I you know, when we started it, um, we were getting traction from people, but I really didn't. I just didn't, I, you know, it's really hard to, to imagine things that haven't happened yet. And like seeing all of our customers sharing with their friends and families, like it's insane. Like people will buy a year supply and then they'll put them in envelopes and they'll go hand them out to people. It's like, like hmm. the, the ambassadors that, that have been built through our mission. Um, it's not, I've never seen anything like it. So that was, that was a pretty cool surprise. Um, in terms of things that were tough, like, I mean, I think a lot of people think that you start an e-commerce business, you scale your, you scale, like the, the outside looking in is you scale your sales and, oh yeah, you just order more stuff, send it to the 3PL and you just sell more. It's not a big deal. But like, you know, there's, there's a lot of um, like tertiary things that happen when you, when you grow that as a marketer or like as somebody getting started, even at like seven figures, it's not that apparent, but there's like, as you grow, like really grow, like if you really, really grow your, your, your customer service needs to be scaled. Your like your purchasing needs to be scaled. You need cash flow to continuously make sure that you have inventory. You need somebody to track like, uh, you almost need like an ERP system to track um, your goods flow. Like there's like, there's a lot of things that change once you go from like, you can probably handle it up to probably, I would say like, you know, depending on what you're selling up to 10 million. And then after that, like it, things, a lot of the the structure of the business really has to change in order for you to be successful. And, you know, this was my first, my first time ever getting to business this size. And it's, there's been a pretty, pretty, there's been a lot of lessons. <laughs> yeah. That's uh that's great. Your customers, the community, I mean, you know, as you were sharing that, that's been a pull. They've pulled you in a way because of the demand. And you you mentioned ambassadors. You know, these are like raving fans. They, you know, they they're really they're really behind the the product. And I mean, and that can be very fulfilling. And rewarding to you know to have the customer, you know, taking you and saying, "Yeah, we want more of this," or you know, "This is this is great. This is good for us. It's good for the for the community, as 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 well." So, it must be very very rewarding to 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 kind of experience that. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. Like my wife, we recently moved, and she bought a a couch from IKEA, and I had to go down and pick it up at the warehouse. And I forgot the receipt. So I was like, can you just look it up? Here's on my visa. Like, can you look it up? And the guy's like calling the store to see like if like if there's video footage of me buying the couch earlier so that they could like justify giving it to me right there. And there's a girl in the store and she's like, I, I had uh, I was wearing this uh, this true earth, this true earth mask. And she's like, oh, she's like, 
do you do you work for True Earth? We love that stuff. All of my friends and family are all giving it to each other. And I'm like, oh, that's so awesome. I wish I had someone here to give you right now. Uh, and like, you know, that's just that's just an example of a random person. Like they didn't know that the, who, who I was. I mean, they saw the True Earth on my on my on my face and they connected with it. And like that's obviously something that's important to them now that they're you know part of the community and uh, you know, identifying somebody in walking around and and you know starting a conversation because of that logo is uh yeah and you know it's just it's uh, uh th- those are the little things that like when, when you say like when you celebrate the wins or whatever it's like when stuff like that happens i'm like whoa this is bigger than you know it's inside of that i can see you know it's 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 big yeah what are, what are some of the things you guys have done uh to grow you know word of mouth and what you just described organically you know, that's clearly one of you. But what have you done to encourage more of it or even uh, non-organic stuff? Yeah, I mean, we do a lot of media buying um, from uh, obviously everybody's you know, Facebook, Facebook, everybody in e-com is touching Facebook. Um, the, the, the stereotypical stuff, Facebook, YouTube, Google, all the Google suite of products. Um done quite a bit with Snapchat, a little bit with Pinterest, although, uh, you know, you, the problem with those platforms is you run into attribution challenges. Um, uh, we've done you know, sampling programs where we uh, do direct mail. That's That was that was pretty fun. Um, we've got, I mean, one of my favorite, my fav- I'll tell you what my favorite thing to do is, my favorite thing to do, like my absolute favorite thing, like my Ryan McKenzie's Christmas morning is launching high production funny viral style videos and i don't know if you guys have seen any of our videos like our we we put out four like big big time production videos and like they're so fun it's just like it's like that is like that is my drug like i could just sit there <laughs> and i just love it like launching those um they they're expensive but they get such a good reaction. Like things you should never mix with water uh, was our first one that we launched back in September. <clears throat> and that was like just insane. People like people think it's a Harmon Brothers video. I've been on the Harmon Brothers podcast talking about it even. Um, and I think that video is pushing about 50 million, 50 to 60 million views now. Um, and then we launched another one uh, called Real Men Do Laundry. And it's kind of like, we got this macho, stereotypical macho guy, and he kind of makes reference to the Old Spice commercial in the beginning with the "Hey, ladies," um, and then you know talks about how uh, men should be doing laundry too. And more recently, we did like a parody of a game show, which uh, was really fun. Um, and like basically, we use that as um, what we did is and I'm sorry, I'm getting too tactical, but we would analyze like all the comments, all the all the objections and everything like that, and like the comparisons to other products. Well, why wouldn't I use this? And then we used it as an objection busting uh, video, and like it, it, pe- people just love them. And you know, I know they're out of range financially, probably for for most brands, but I've tested the exact structure without comedy, without high quality um, uh, footage. And they still perform almost, you know, fa- fairly similar. You just don't get the viral factor. So um, I, 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 I just love those those th- those videos. Is my my favorite thing. Mm-hmm. Nice. This is really really good stuff. Um, changing subjects a little bit. <laughs> what conversations do you feel e-commerce business owners need to have? with their accountant, with their accounting firms, you know, the company that's helping them with the, with the numbers, with their financials. Get your, get your books. I mean, depends what you want to do, right? Like if you, if you need to get funding from the bank, you need to get funding from anywhere, get your, get your ducks in a row, get your, like, I am not, a, if I was, uh, if you were to, I would, I would, I went to the school of ants from Zoolander for, for accounting. That's uh, that's how good I am at accounting. So I am not a bright bulb on the accounting uh, Christmas tree, but it is so important. Like if you don't know, if you like ask your, if, if you don't have systems in place for like keeping track of your, your, uh, your, your invoices and everything like that, have you work with your accounting team to get a very systemized streamlined process that you're doing like, like, I mean, ideally weekly, because 
<clears throat> if you ever need to go back and clean up your clean up your books to present them to somebody, it is a nightmare and like it's not like it's not something that you can do in a weekend like the size of it like it's like months and months so like if if i could start all over again i've been in business for like 20 years and i never really discovered this until i've never like got really on board with it until recently is that like that is going to be your biggest achilles heel if you ever want to go beyond being like a mom and pop mom and pop shop is if your books your accounting isn't in order. So, you know, if it's not, go spend some money, spend some time, get that fixed up immediately. Um, and, and then, you know, you, you can grow at whatever pace and know that when, when, if you need something, if you need to, like, either you want to exit, you need money, like, like all these things, if you don't have your books in order, like you're just, you're, you're shit out of luck. Oops, pardon. Sorry. Don't know if I can swear. <laughs> <laughs> No worries. Um, yeah, so really having a financial system in place that you can rely on, you can look at and you know look at the numbers and see what what are they saying, what what warnings are there, what what are the things that you should be doing, can be doing in your business, yeah. and like little things, little things for for smaller businesses too is like you know SaaS products and subscription products. Those are like if you, if you're not consistently using them, those are like profit leaks. Those are you know, those add up quickly too. Like, I mean, even personally, like I, I, I need to audit my own credit card for like the random services that I'm subscribed to because everything in a SaaS world now, it's just like, oh, nobody really cares. Nine bucks, 10 bucks a month, 20 bucks a month. But those those add up quickly. And, you know, you, it's uh, like financially irresponsible to, to keep keep paying for things that you're not using. Yeah, yeah. What are some of the important numbers, financial indicators that you guys look at on a regular basis in your business? I mean, there's a there's a lot of different numbers depending on what department. So you know, I, I prime, I'm the I'm the CMO of the company. Um, so like our big our big numbers are really um, we have we have a like a a budget for customer acquisition costs, but it's a percentage of total revenue. So we're trying to keep our our total percentage of advertising spend like you know sub 33 percent like under 33 percent so like if we're if we start the month off and and things aren't off to as good a start as as we had hoped um we either need to um you know reduce the less performing ads or uh double down on uh new creatives or things that are working <clears throat> um that's that's one of the big ones we have like a blended we also look at a blended cpa so like I know a lot of people like there's a lot of people that concern themselves with attribution and like, you know, where everything's coming from. And the way I look at attribution is I, I, just, I like to take the platforms model and use that as a compass, uh, but not not it's not like the map. It's not like the definitive uh, rule on on the attribution. And then we take all of our spend every day. And we divide it by new customers, not not returning customers, because I don't want to pay for them again, or I don't want to account for them in my in my in my uh, net KPI. So then I I basically blend all the spend by all the new customers, or divide it by sorry, and that's that's my CPA for the day. And I can tell, you know, I can generally I generally have a pretty good idea if I'm going to be like going over my uh, percentage of ad spend. If, if that CPA is getting too far out of whack and like, you know, if it does start getting out of whack, I can go and look at all the different campaigns and again, use the compasses, which is their internal attribution to reduce the, reduce the campaigns that aren't, uh, aren't driving the best results and, you know, pull the levers as, as appropriate. Yeah. What would your advice be, Ryan, to a business that's relatively new in the e-commerce space? They want to get to the seven figure mark. Or, or a business that's been that's kind of plateaued in the half a million, three quarter million dollar mark can't cannot seem to get to that next level. You know, a few things you'd you know, a few pieces of advice you'd give them. Yeah, I mean, the the, the biggest things are like when when I look at scale, is you you sc you can scale your. I mean, there's there's th there's there's three three ways you grow your business, right? You either get more customers, you either increase your average order value, or you increase the lifetime value of your existing customers. So, 
Um, you know, if, if it comes down to needing <clears throat> more new customers and your existing offer isn't working like it used to, chances are you need a new offer. You know, that's a, that, that's a, a basic offer fix. So, you know, that could be bundling together uh, a couple different products and making a kit. That could be, um, you know, trying to find another winning product that you can put on your front end. Um, <clears throat> average order value, if you need to, you know, if, if you're being held back on your ad spend because you, um, you can't afford to pay for your customer acquisition because you're not, your average order value is too low, uh, you know, start split testing um, different things with your website. Like try to get your either your conversion rate up or um, add some different upsell sequences, whether you use like one click upsell or a cart hook or or whatever, whatever if you're using click funnels, you know, order bumps, like test different products because you know there's some products that, that I'll put out that get like a 40% take on on an upsell and other ones that take get like four, four percent. So sometimes it's as simple as adjusting um, your upsells to increase your AOV. And then finally, the lifetime value thing. Um, you know, a lot I know I find a lot of people will have like a single product business and they will if they can't make money on the front end, um, then they uh, aren't in business. Um, and you know, there's it's pretty easy to find high affinity products that go that are, that are in line with um, <clears throat> that are in line with what you're already selling. Uh, you know, ideally something something if you're trying to ex- extend your lifetime value, you, uh, you ideally want something that has really good margins so that you can realize majority of that additional revenue. But you know, you know, if if you have a front end product and you can't think of something to that to physically offer them, you know, even things like 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 digital products are an option, you know, putting together a course to sell to people that are that are in your community, putting together an ebook that you can sell them. Obviously, I mean, obviously, ebook doesn't have the, uh, uh, the, the the price of an ebook would be probably not large enough to, to see substantial increase in your LTV. But you know, those are three, those are the three main points that I would address. Because too many people get stuck on that hamster wheel of just like, oh man, my return on ad spend on my product, I can't get over this this number. And I think it's just they're they're not looking at they're they're looking at it from one lens and there's 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 three main ways that they can grow their business that they you know they might not have thought of. Yeah, that's great. Great advice. And and Ryan, I mean, I think I'd come across this advice which you shared a number of years back. I think it was Jay Abraham. You may have yep. You may have done the same because you said you're in business for for a while, and I'm sure you're you you, you know you, you've studied and and so forth to be where where you, where you're at. But yeah, really three ways to grow a business. So that was a a great a kind of a, a great a big broad big picture there, and you know some of the things some a person can do in each of those three areas to grow their to grow their their top line. Good stuff. Awesome. All right. Thanks. Good, Ryan. This has been so informative. Really appreciate you taking the time for this. A couple of finishing you know, questions to, to kind of wrap up here. Uh, no, first one is, uh, where can people find out about you? You know, I have, I, you know, from what you've shared, big movement, lots of people that are enjoying the product. Uh, and, you know, I was on Amazon. And I think there's like 17,000 reviews. and like 4.9 so that's pretty crazy what you've done there but how how can people find out more about you yeah i mean um the the uh the low-hanging fruit uh you can find me on linkedin um that's uh that's right search for ryan mckenzie i'm sure you'll see me see a picture of me wearing a, a suit or something which isn't that common for me but uh or you can find me on facebook um 
uh, probably, you know, I don't post a ton about business on Facebook, but that's usually the, the easiest way to actually get a hold of me. Um, if you want to say hi, I just, you know, if you, if you, uh, if you want to actually have a conversation with me, send me a message because I, I, if I don't recognize somebody, I probably won't uh, accept a friend request. But if you send me a message and uh, let me know that you're came from here, then I'd be happy to happy to chat. Um, and if, if, if anybody's interested in trying True Earth, um, you can check out True Earth at tru dot earth e a r t h there's there's no dot com um and i made a coupon code for you guys if anybody listening wants to try true earth uh that would make me extremely happy um you can use money map 10 to save 10 percent off uh your purchase all right awesome do it guys <laughs> all right final question uh and it is final words of wisdom ryan god the final words of wisdom um you know Every, every one of the things that I find that I've experienced over the years in business, especially kind of when you're when you're in that like get, trying to get to the seven figure range and you don't have a lot of help, you don't have a lot of staff, and you're juggling a lot of balls, you're overwhelmed. You you, you go through like these low phases where you kind of like wonder like what am I? Why am I doing this? Why am I putting myself through all of this stress? And like I used to get that a lot. Um, before, because I didn't really have, like, I didn't really, I was all about the money. And if you can find a purpose inside of your business that, that just isn't all about like Lambos and whatever, you know, once you, once you get past the stuff, because once you get the stuff, you're, you're still the same person. You're just, you're just, you know, you hop in the, your fancy car after and you're, and you're still, you know, if you like cars, you like cars, but like, it's a, it's a hedonic treadmill of like, you know, wanting something newer and better. If you can transition your mindset to to uh, to making impact, when you get those anxieties, when you get overwhelmed, when you get worked up and wonder, like, why am I hustling so hard for so little profit? Like, when you can switch that to being about impact, the the anxiety that you feel about you, you're you're not going to want to say, oh, I'm done with this. I'm just going to get a job because you're working towards a bigger goal. You're working towards uh, help, helping the world. You're working towards whatever it is that's important to you. And it's a lot harder to give up on something that's uh, that you care about that's not financial than it is to be like, you know what, I'm done. I've 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 done. I'm done grinding for for something that that uh, just returns gives me returns that make me want more returns and <laughs> and more stuff. You know. So yeah, it's 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 kind of it's it's kind of a bit of a for for me it's easier it's easier to give up on money than it is to give up on the planet and um you, i've changed my focus from scaling business revenue to scaling impact and um how many people can we help how many people are, how how can we make the world a better place for for our kids and their kids wow that's truly great final words of wisdom appreciate that you put you put me on the spot man <laughs> i know <laughs> that's awesome ryan thank you so much man appreciate you thanks for having me thanks for listening to the e-commerce money map podcast if you'd like to hear more episodes you can find them at ecommercemoneymap.com or on your favorite podcast directory don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to learn more about the e-commerce accounting hub visit ecommerceaccountinghub.com. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on the e-commerce money map podcast.